Today, I'm going to be talking about the surprising link between the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders and brain function. Hi, I'm Dr. Claire Francomano, and I'm a medical geneticist who's been caring for people with the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders for many, many years. You might wonder what connection bendy joints might have to the brain, but it is surprising what a wide range of neurologic, neurocognitive, and neuropsychiatric complaints people with many different types of Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and the hypermobility spectrum disorders experience. Headaches are very common in people with many different types of EDS. They may have impaired proprioception, and we know that autonomic dysfunction can be very common among people with EDS and HSD. In the neuropsychiatric realm, we see increased prevalence of anxiety and depression, affective disorders, and neurodivergence, including autism and ADHD. So a combination of autonomic, altered proprioception, probably genetic factors, all contribute to the development of of these neurologic, neurocognitive, and neuropsychiatric issues in people living with EDS and HSD. We know that in people who have POTS and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or hypermobility spectrum disorder, there is a decreased flow of blood to the brain upon standing. It's a really a marked decrease in blood flow to the brain, and that can obviously influence cognitive function. In the periodontal type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, imaging studies have shown a progressive leukoencephalopathy. So these are changes in the white matter in the brain, which is thought to be due to small vessel disease. And in hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, there has also been one study which was published in 2016 showing an increased prevalence of white matter tract lesions, which are more prevalent after people have had trauma in their youth. These white matter tract lesions may contribute to chronic pain, fatigue, and neuropsychiatric symptoms, but their direct clinical impact is still under investigation. In the vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, we know that there are neurovascular complications and people may have intracranial aneurysms and arterial dissections that can result in hemorrhagic stroke. So management of these complex neurologic, neuropsychiatric, and neurocognitive issues requires identification of the root cause of the particular problem that a person is experiencing. And once that root cause is identified, we need a multidisciplinary team for management, as is the case for many, many of the issues that we see in EDS and HSD. So this is a brief rundown on the surprising connection between the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes, hypermobility spectrum disorders, and the brain. Thanks for taking the time to be with me today, and I wish you the very best on your journey. 